Hello folks! Here are some useful tips that I've gathered in my 3k plus hours of playtime in New World I thought you might find helpful. I'm gonna run through them pretty quickly, so pay attention, and here we go! The first tip might be obvious, but it's too important to glance past. Be prepared with cooldown materials. This means having enough infused leather, infused silk, boracalcum ingots, ironwood planks, in order to make your cooldown materials each day. Rune stones seem to be optional right now. It's the only resource that sometimes the cost to make them can actually exceed the cost of selling. The next tip ties in really well. Buy orders are much more valuable than buying from sell orders. There's people constantly filling buy orders, and in a lot of cases, you can save 50% off the regular price of certain materials. Another feature of buy orders is that you can actually use them to overcap your storage with cheaper materials. Like in this case, I'm buying food and overcapping two of my storages so that I can have 7,000 pounds of resources in a storage shed that's only meant to hold 1,000 pounds. Speaking of storages, everyone has their own way to organize. I like to keep all of the food I'm crafting with in brimstone. In Cleves Point, I have my overflow cooldown mats. Ebon Scales where I do all of my crafting, so that's where most of my resources sit. Brightwood, I have all of my magic gear. Reekwater, I have all of my strength gear. Restless Shores is for all of my pots. Windsward is most cooked food and potions. Monarch's Bluff, I have a wide array of craft mods. And there's a couple more overflow storages that I didn't show. Next tip, do not let your Azoth or repair parts overcap. For Azoth, it's as simple as taking the split craft mods and turning them into single attribute craft mods like the Iron Battle Metal. They cost a lot more, and there's no reason not to use your Azoth for this. For repair parts, you're going to want to convert these into repair kits. It takes 1800 repair parts, three sets of six craft mods. Craft mods you can buy super cheap on the TP, and this will allow you to repair any weapons or armor. At first, you may only want to use it for your weapons, because that's the biggest bang for your buck, but I've got too many now, so I use them for everything. My next tip is, if you're parkouring and you accidentally overshoot the jump, don't be afraid to use Unstuck. It's there for you, it's super convenient, and it's got a cooldown of like 90 seconds. There's literally no reason not to use it if you fall down. My next tip's mostly for PvP, but it's not a combat tip exactly. I learned this from MOBAs, but you can't avoid toxic people. You can mute them. The next tip is something that I've been doing for quite a while that makes me a decent bit of gold. Pick a spot on the map with a large amount of resources, but not too big that people camp there. Then, queue up for OPR or 3v3s, or go about your daily life. Come back every 10 to 15 minutes when things respawn, and gather your materials. In this case, I'm farming thick hides in Great Cleave. My next tip also has to do with farming resources. As you're likely aware, there's a bonus for gathering at 250 of each attribute. Intelligence for harvesting, con for logging, dex for skinning, and strength for mining. In this clip, I've started with five intelligence, and by equipping a full intelligence armor set, jewelry, and weapons, I'm able to hit that 250 attribute threshold without actually respecking or spending any gold. To get the most out of it, you'll want to make sure that you have the skinning or logging or mining or harvesting luck perk on each one of your armor pieces, as well as your amulet. The way that I organize my sets, for example, my con set, I've set to 601 gear score. Until gear sets are introduced in the game, it's a really easy way for me to find all the pieces I need to go logging. My next tip is don't forget to use your music buff. This is important for farming, either yield or luck, or even if you're just kicking around town or doing quests, use the territory standing increase. If you have them unlocked, it only takes 40 seconds to use, and it lasts for an hour and a half. They also fixed it so that if you log out and come back later, the buff will still be there. My next tip is that aptitude crates can absolutely be free gold. A little disclaimer that you will want to make sure that it's worth your time. So in my case, I've found that cooking aptitude crates are almost always going to yield me a profit, mainly because I can sell the hearty meals and almost break even so that all of the aptitude crates I get are just a bonus. It used to be very profitable to do armor leveling. So you'd level up your armor skills with a cheap resource, crafting infused leather gloves for instance. That's no longer the case because most of the resources used to craft it end up being more expensive than the rewards. You may want to check on your server. In my case, 
cooking is the only one that I've done consistently for months that have always yielded me a profit. My next tip is as soon as you hit level 60 or if you're already there, make sure you have five armor pieces to gear score 625 and a few weapons as well. Craft daily gypsum orbs, two garnet gypsum from 3v3s, an emerald gypsum just from crafting, and two diamond gypsum. These are five gypsums that you can gather in less than 15 minutes daily. If you have at least a couple pieces to 625 gear score, it's a guaranteed 2,000 umbral shards a day. To add on to the daily gypsum grind, you can also do two PvP missions every day, which gives you a ton of extra tokens. I like to run mine in Brimstone because it's super close for me, and it only takes about 10 minutes to do the whole run. I gather a couple of resources along the way, so it takes me a bit longer. This allows you to gather two more gypsum orbs from the faction token vendor. It's well worth your time, especially if you're still getting to 625. Next, you should always have at least four armor pieces of focus gear on you, or two armor pieces and two weapons. This is to make sure that you can hit the 100 focus threshold any time you're about to salvage a decent amount of gear. I wouldn't do this for just one or two random pieces, but if you're salvaging 10 plus pieces after a dungeon run, you'll want to make sure that you have 100 focus so you can have that 10% boost in your salvage. My next tip is ABC always be collecting. So if you're just standing around chatting in Discord or running around town just doing nothing, always be collecting. Run out and farm some trees or rocks. It adds up really quickly. If you're standing around waiting for a dungeon to start, just walk outside wherever you are and farm whatever resource you see first. This next tip stemmed from complaints that I saw on Reddit about how annoying the schematics can be. My strategy for dealing with music schematics, furniture, or cooking recipes is I'll go through and make sure that I've learned all the ones in my inventory or my storage, and then I'll go to the TP and very quickly run through the list of schematics and recipes that I have. Any that sell for a hundred bucks plus, I'll post up, and as soon as I'm done going through every single one in the list, I will leave the TP and immediately drop them on the ground. There's no reason to keep 30 or 50 or 100 different schematics that are all worth 99 cents. They're never gonna go up in value, just throw them away. Whenever you're in town, just check the town board and grab any kill quests that might be on the board. It only takes a second and you'll eventually kill them just incidentally. It's some quick gold in territory standing. It's worth the time. When you're looking through a, a large amount of storage, looking for that right piece of armor or jewelry, just sort by weight. It's gonna make it a lot easier to see the only three light pants you have rather than scrolling through by gear score. It also puts all of your jewelry at the top or the bottom of your inventory or storage chest. I saved one of the best for last. I actually made a short about this, but if you haven't already, invest in pigments. With transmog coming out soon, these resources are about to skyrocket. I've been making gold by buying pigment and crafting and selling dyes for some time, but this gold making opportunity is going to increase substantially when transmog comes out. There'll be a much higher demand for dyes. The last tip I'll leave you with is totally personal preference, but I like to change my damage numbers so that they are no longer floating. I've tried it both ways. I do prefer the stacking damage numbers if I'm playing anything other than ranged. I find in ranged gameplay it's nice for the numbers to move out of the way, but anytime I'm doing melee damage, I want to see how much damage I'm doing and to who I'm doing it to. So having the damage numbers stack right over the health bar makes it incredibly convenient. That's all for now. And if you haven't already, I'll see you in Eternal.